Hi, I'm Corey Nockreiner, Director of Security Strategy here at WatchGuard Technologies, and welcome to the first episode of WatchGuard's Security Week in Review. In this vlog, which I hope to bring you weekly, I plan to summarize all the big network and information security stories I see throughout the week, and when appropriate, I'll share practical tips you can use to defend your networks. Well, January has already started off with a bang as far as security is concerned. So let's dive right in with our first episode covering the week starting January 16th. The first big story of the week was a breach against Zappos.com. You've probably heard of Zappos.com. They're an online retailer owned by Amazon that primarily sells shoes. Well, on Sunday, they warned their employees and their customers that they had suffered a network breach and that attackers had got away with a lot of their sensitive information. The bad news is the attackers were able to steal a lot of personal data like your name, your address, uh, your phone number, your email address, and they also got away with the uh, table of all the users' passwords. Now this table was hashed or encrypted in some way. So to some extent, you know, we don't know that the attackers really have the passwords yet. But depending on how Zappos encrypted those passwords, if maybe they used a standard hashing technique like MD5, it's possible that attackers could actually use rainbow tables or other password cracking techniques to steal those passwords. So if you're a customer of Zappos, you do have to worry about your passwords being stolen. Now the good news is the attackers did not get away with any credit card numbers or any information related to that, at least according to Zappos, so that's not gone. So if you are a Zappos customer, what should you do? Well first of all, you got to assume that your password has been stolen and is in the hands of bad guy. So go ahead and go to Zappos now and definitely change your password. I think Zappos is sending out emails and forcing their customers to do this. But the one tip I need to share about password security is security researchers often tell people never to use the same password at many different websites. And this attack is a perfect reason why. If an attacker has your Zappos password and you happen to use the same password for Gmail or Facebook, chances are the attacker can use your email address and log on to those other websites as well. So if you do use the same password for a lot of sites and you do are a Zappos customer, you should definitely go change your password everywhere. And this time you need to go and make your password different at all those different sites. Now I know telling people to use different passwords at all the different sites is actually pretty tough advice to take. It takes some work if you're doing it manually. However, I do recommend you use something called a password vault. This is a, a type of program that will securely store all your passwords. There's many different ones out there. One I use is called a 1Password. I like it quite a bit. And I've seen people in uh, my comments of WatchGuard Security Center posts talk about another one called Password Safe. So again, Zappos people, change your password. Don't use the same password everywhere. And if you're not using one already, start using a password safe. The second story of the week is Oracle Patch Day. Oracle does a quarterly patching cycle, and the first one of the year actually fell Tuesday of this week. Uh, during this release, Oracle released 78 different pass, uh, patches, so tons and tons of patches. I believe something like uh, 27 of those affected MySQL, two affected other Oracle database software, and something like 17 or so affected Sun software, an Oracle purchased Sun a while back. So if you're an Oracle or Sun user or you use MySQL, you should definitely go to Oracle's site and download Oracle's latest patches. Moving right along, story number three is a major cyber war in the Middle East. Over this week, we've heard a lot of stories about uh, different uh, Middle Eastern countries and, and hackers in those countries actually going against each other. Uh, this all started early in the week. It might have even started last week when a Saudi Arabian-based hacker who called himself OX Omar uh, announced that he had breached many, many Israeli uh, people's credit card numbers. I don't know exactly what site he got them from, but he claimed to have, have gotten personal details and credit card numbers from 400,000 uh, Israeli citizens. And he started uh, publicly releasing some of those credit cards online. 
Uh, this continued to escalate uh, after this uh, Saudi attacker announced he released these credit cards. Some Israeli students started trying to track him down and publicly uh, expose him. Meanwhile, I believe that the forced, uh, foreign minister in Israel also made a statement saying that this type of attack is, is on par with terrorism. So he spoke very strongly against it. Now, of course, this just caused Omar to do even more and more uh, posts and more and more credit card leaks. On top of that, another hacking group and hacker calling himself Hannibal got in on the issue as well. Uh, later in the week, I believe it happened around Tuesday or Wednesday, Omar and some other hacking groups also started attacking some of the Israeli sites. They were able to take down the Tel Aviv stock market, some airline sites, and even some packing sites. Now this is when Israeli hackers or Israeli-based hackers got in on it as well. And they started trying to do the same type of breaches. Uh, they took down Saudi Arabia's stock market exchange site. They also started doing breaches where they were finding some uh, Saudi Arabian and other Arab credit cards which they disclosed. So long story short, there's a big mess going on, on in Saudi Arabia and Israel right now. Last year, I actually had a prediction talking about how the cyber war is happening now. Many, many countries are gearing up with their cyber armies. Uh, but besides that, it seems like there's a lot of hacktivists in the world that are taking these matters in their own hands, and you should expect to see more political situations turning into these sorts of cyber incidents. Another big story this week that happened later in the week was Anonymous is back. If you haven't heard of Anonymous and other hacktivist groups like LulzSec, these are groups that tend to get uh, involved in political situations. For instance, back when WikiLeaks exposed a lot of U.S. documents and the U.S. government started going after WikiLeaks financially and legally, Anonymous was one of the groups that started dossing the credit card companies that were withholding their payments from WikiLeaks. So, the latest thing that happened is this week there is a site, a file sharing site called Mega Upload. It's a, I call it a cyber locker or a file locker. It's a site where you can upload files and share them with other people. Now, of course, whenever you have file lockers, there's a potential for bad guys or, or pirates to actually use them to put up copyright software. And this week, on Thursday, the U.S. government, in partnership with a bunch of other organizations, they actually took down uh, Mega Uploads and all its sister sites and arrested many of the members and owners of this particular business. Uh, they claim that most of the content on Mega Uploads is pirated. Well, anyways, between this and uh, some other bills that are passing the U.S. Congress, SOPA and PIPA, which are intellectual property protection bills that do have big repercussions on how the Internet might work in the U.S., between these two factors, uh, it was enough to actually rattle anonymous nests and get them upset. So right after Mega Uploads was taken down, Anonymous uh, organized what they call their largest ever attack. And they used tools like LOC, which is a low orbit impact cannon. Uh, it's essentially a tool used to, to create distributed denial of service attacks. They get a lot of members to run this tool and then they can target it at a website. It sends what seemingly normal web requests to the website, but it really overwhelms them, sends so many requests that the website, you know, no one can access it. So they basically organized this attack. They went after the FBI, uh, the United States uh, Copyright uh, uh, Department, the Department of Justice. Uh, they went off after a lot of uh, uh, record label sites, and obviously the MIA and, and I'm sorry, the... RIA, R-I-A-A, and MPAA, the two organizations from the music and movie industry that try to fight piracy. And pretty much on Thursday, they knocked down all these sites. Uh, they, uh, it was said that they actually generated 13 to 14 percent more traffic that day than is normal. So it looks like Anonymous are back to their, their little tricks and schemes. Uh, last year really was the year of breaches, many of them being caused by Anonymous or more specifically LulzSec. Uh, one of my predictions this year is to expect to see this, this barrage of breaches to continue. And I think this is the first sign that that prediction will come true. Finally, let's end with some good news. A group of people actually started disclosing the, the real identities of a gang of criminals responsible for the Kubeface uh, uh, virus or Kubeface worm. If you haven't heard of Kubeface, it's actually an anagram of Facebook. 
And this worm has been plaguing Facebook users for years and years. It also affects other social network users as well. So it's a very, very popular uh, worm that's been affecting social networks for quite a long time. Uh, many people have it. They say anywhere from 400,000 to 800,000 computers were infected during its heyday. Well, anyways, Facebook and then Sophos and some other organizations actually identified very specifically these members, uploading pictures of them, where they live, and things like that. So it sounds like the Cube Face gang has been unmasked. And the other interesting story is almost immediately after they were unmasked, Cube Face's master server, which the attackers call Mothership, disappeared. It went offline. And now the, the Cube Face botnet is essentially not working. Uh, the authorities haven't arrested these guys yet. There's always issues with international cooperation. But it seems like Cube Face may be gone. And uh, hopefully the authorities will catch up with this and actually catch these bad guys and put them in jail. Meanwhile, while Cube Face is gone, I will warn you that usually whenever one botnet disappears, another one does come back. So do expect to still protect yourself from botnets uh, every year. Uh, my advice is defense in depth. Botnets are definitely blended threats. They come at you through email, through the web, through social networks. They use direct network attacks. They can use automated SQL injection to infect sites. They're really a multi-headed blended threat. So you need many, many def defenses to protect yourself, which by the way is exactly why WatchGuard has our XTM solution, providing all those defenses in one easy to manage appliance. So that's it for Security Stories of the Week. I hope this was useful to you and come back next time. Uh, I'll put links to all these stories on the WatchGuard Security Center when I post this and we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching.